Hi there, I'm Andrea Kennedy, and this is the Mainstream Reiki YouTube channel. And I just arrived to my office today, and oh, I don't know, I have so much on my mind. And usually I would take more time to, you know, set up my equipment and have all the right stuff set. And I just, you know, I'm just not going to do it this time. So this is just me, and I'm just going to talk, and I hope it works out. Uh, because I guess I really feel uh, strongly about my topic today. And the topic today is if you want to be a Reiki practitioner, then, oh boy, uh, stop with the love donation and giving your services away. All right, how did this all start? I was on social media this morning and I went on and there was a woman <clears throat> in a group and she asked the other community members uh, about if she wants to be, uh, she's having trouble building her business and she wanted to know what tips they had for her so that she could build her business her Reiki business. And so, you know, there were some nice um, comments and of course people mean well in these groups and they want to help each other. And I think that's great. Um, and there were some meaningful things there. Well, from my perspective, there's so much that I could say, and I just can't put it in a little bitty post on there. Um, but you know what I did? I just didn't even say a word uh, on this particular post. A lot of times I might say some things and, you know, at least maybe point them to the YouTube channel so that they can pick and choose and maybe get some, some good ideas. But what happened was I read a certain, um, a couple of these responses on the, on the post and the people were saying things like, oh, hold a free, um, day of Reiki, uh, Reiki appointments and have a basket for love donations, that kind of thing. And I thought, what? If she wants to be a professional Reiki uh, business owner in her community, that is the last thing you need to do. And there are a lot of reasons why. So I'll try and make sense of this because um, I have a lot going through my head. So I'm glad you're here for this. Um, if you like the topics here on the channel, I would love it if you'd subscribe and maybe like some of the videos. Also, I always welcome your comments down below in the comment section and any questions too. And if you have ideas for subjects that you want to see me cover, I'll be happy to do that too. All right. So back to the post. If um, you do love donations and it works for you and, and you're happy with that, awesome. I think that's brilliant. This is for those people who want a Reiki business, want an income. So enough with the love donations, a love, enough with the free sessions. Those days are over. You are, by doing those things, you're projecting to the community. You're projecting to everybody who sees and knows that you're doing that. You're projecting that what you're doing isn't worth much. All right. So um, it's true. I'm sorry. But uh, if you will instead have confidence in what you're doing, know there's value to it, assign a price that you're comfortable with, and then move forward. Anytime that you're giving your things away, how can you then ask for people to then step up and then pay for it in a session? And I mean, donations, okay, that might bring in a little bit of money, but I'll bet we could go down to our big box store down the street and make more an, of an hourly wage there than perhaps your love donation that isn't even required uh, for your Reiki sessions is bringing in. So again, I just can't say enough. If, if you will believe in the value of what you're offering and then put a price tag on it, and that might be hard, I get it, but this is the culture we live in. We spend money on things that we value. We spend money on things that we want. And professionals, if you wanna be a professional, then that's what professionals do. They actually charge a fee for their services. So when you give it away for nothing and say, well, if you feel like giving me some money in the basket, oh, I would just love that, I'd be so appreciative and all that, you know, that's like charity. And a Reiki business, any business owner, that isn't a charity. Charities are important. I have volunteered. I volunteered with animals. I volunteered with cancer patients, survivors, and caregivers. So I know all about the value of volunteering and charity. But I tell you what, when you decide you want to do this as a business, you have to prioritize your time. And paying the bills isn't going to come from uh, an optional donation. 
paying the bills isn't going to come from uh, giving your sessions away for free. Uh, you might be gaining experience, so yes, that's a positive. But you know, a hidden thing that you might not even be aware of is when you start charging money for Reiki, or let's say anything now, I think this is true for anything, when you start charging money for your services, something else happens that you might not be aware of, you become more responsible. You become more um, engaged in what you're doing and really committed to offering quality in what you do. And this is really super true. Um, I don't know, be be honest with yourself because I'll share this with you. If uh, I was just at my um, last Reiki share and that, those are free, I don't ever charge or even take donations for those, but I hold those monthly. And I was there and one of my students who was attending that night asked me, well, do you ever um, watch TV when you do Reiki or, or you know, think of other things when you do Reiki? And uh, so I, I, my answer was, um, that actually, no, I don't, uh, I don't focus on anything else other than that person. And the reason why I realized uh, when I was answering that question, the reason why I don't focus on anything else is most of my Reiki sessions, that person has paid to come and have that session with me. So you better believe every ounce of my being is focused on that client and doing whatever I can to make their experience absolutely the best it can possibly be. So uh, absolutely not. Now, if I, now I do remember um, before I ever had a business and I would work with my family and friends, you know, and offer them Reiki. And I, I will admit to you that there were times that I would just be thinking about all kinds of other things. And, you know, when I would catch myself, cause I won't, I won't pretend that, you know, when I'm doing sessions in my office and people have, are my clients and they are paying me, sometimes I, my, I'll find that my mind has wandered. And you know what? That's just normal. But when I do that, I whoop, right back into my session and I, I go right back into my session and my focus on that client. So, I mean, we're not robots or anything, but um, there's a level of awareness that you have and that commitment that you have when you know that that person is spending their hard-earned money to be there with you because they know Reiki is worth it. So please, please, please start valuing your time, your training, and above all, Reiki. So the more of us out there who go into business, who promote the value of Reiki through exchange of money for it, the more of us that do that, the more think about the uh, idea of what Reiki is and what we're doing to um, make it a viable, valuable, um, true service, a true modality. Um, again, if, if you're out there and you're offering it for free and that floats your boat, awesome. That's fine with, with me. But there is a value to Reiki. There's nothing wrong with charging for Reiki. Uh, if a person had, if, I mean, think of a child with a God-given gift of uh, voice and who can sing opera or something like that. We've all seen these uh, little magical uh, children on TV that can do this and they have this absolute gift, right? They didn't go and have years of training and anything like that, but they have this gift. And so uh, they're maybe trying to win a competition on TV or whatever it is so that they can have a big show. And guess what? They're going to sell tickets to the show and the child will make money for the God-given gift that they have. And we don't ever judge that. We don't think that that's wrong. So if you have an issue about taking money for Reiki, um, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but you need to clear that up. If you want to be in business, you need to clear that up. You need to do self-Reiki. Go to other practitioners for Reiki that you trust. Um, it, journal. Uh, meditate on it. Find out you know, scan your body, use your, use what you know to help yourself. And another idea, uh, I'll put a link up here for the Holy Fire Healing Experience Meditation that helps you remove a block. So this issue with money you have, um, you could work with that. And the Reiki energy works with you directly to clear the block. So that can be a great uh, meditative opportunity for healing and also enlightenment. You might get more detail 
and more information about just exactly what is holding you back in that area and it might help you. So again, I'll put a link up there somewhere for that video. Is there anything else? I don't know. I think that's about all I had to say, but just know that, you know, all of the effort that you've put in, the caring, the compassion, and that I know without a doubt, you want to help people. You want to help more people. That's what how Reiki people are. And if you want to help more people, then you're going to have to do some tough things if you want to have a business in order to reach more of those people. <sighs> anyway, I hope that this video was valuable to you in some in some regard. And uh, again, if you uh, just let me know, uh, you can like it or, you know, you know, YouTube, you know what to do. Um, but anyway, it's been a pleasure. I've been enjoying making the videos for you. And I look forward to uh, my next uh, possible rant. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so, so happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to give you this opportunity to just sort of offer my perspective. And with that, I offer you highest Reiki blessings and have a wonderful, wonderful day.